Greetings fellow captains and welcome back to another World of Warships Legends video with the High Pound. And today we're going to take our first serious review. Um, I've decided to slightly change up uh, how I review ships to give you a bit more detail, a bit more in depth. Rather than me just sort of going, uh, use a gameplay, use a review. Um, so I don't know, I'm struggling with the title still. So I'll take suggestions <laughs> down in the uh, the comments below. Um, but right, with that out of the way, the first ship we're going to look at in this new series is HMS Plymouth, uh, a current tier 7 available in the premium store. Uh, for those who can't be bothered and don't want to watch the full review and just want to know the meat and bones, um, how I would describe the Plymouth as a high skill floor, for floor cruiser that is not fit for the casual player. Uh, map awareness is a really key component to getting the best out of the ship or getting anything out of the ship other than being sent back to port. Uh, it does come with AP only as uh, is a bit of a trait of the British cruisers in general. It also has some pretty good torps at 10 kilometers, but I think they're more of a area of denial uh, rather than a, an offensive weapon. Uh, you have the option of smoke and radar. You can't use both. And uh, long and short of it, basically, if you use it as a smoke, it's a tier 7 Fiji. So anyone who's quite fond of the British cruisers will, in fact, uh, quite enjoy this. So, to get more into the review side of things. So, what is HMS Plymouth? Uh, it is a design uh, for one of the fabled town class cruiser variants of the Royal Navy, uh, taking the potent class of light -like cruisers to the next level uh, by lengthening the ship, uh, replacing the three triple 152mm turrets with four quadruple 152mm guns. Uh, but unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on what side of the war you're on, uh, this ship never made it off the paper design uh, due to the complexity of the quad turret design and the performance of the already well-established triple 152mm. Um, and what we ended up work with is HMS Belfast, which you can still visit in the City of London, and HMS Edinburgh, both, who, both of which who have significant histories during the Second World War. Right, so let's get on to the good, the bad, and the ugly about the ship. Right, so what are the good things about HMS Plymouth? Well, first of all, it has 16 152mm guns, uh, which uh, boasts a rather impressive 6.5 second base reload, uh, giving it the fourth highest DPM at the tier at uh, 457,000 damage per minute. And with the right build, or well, at least with one of my builds, uh, with the Epic Secondary mod maxed out, uh, you can get the reload down to sub five seconds and give you over 600,000 damage per minute in the late game when it's maxed out. Uh, it has two by four torpedo launchers, so two quadruple torpedo launch tubes, one on either side, with a base range of 10 kilometers and a reasonably low reaction time. Uh, so their speed, which is 62 knots, and the detectability range of 1.3 kilometers, uh, gives basically gives the enemy about eight seconds to re react, uh, which is uh, quite a nice auxiliary armament, but I'd focus this more on area of denial rather than an outright offensive weapon. Uh, short fuse, British AP. Uh, if you're familiar with British cruisers, you're already aware of how absolutely devastating this is to destroyers. Uh, and is also incredibly effective against broadside superstructures on battleships. And actually very good against uh, the majority of uh, cruisers alike. Uh, the only downside is it does lack effectiveness against bow tanking ships. Um, many DDs, uh, if they if they play it right, can, can simply bow tank you and negate all the damage. Um, battleships, you can still aim for the superstructure, but you're not going to get as many hits. And essentially the same thing goes for cruisers. Um, so you really need to be on the supporting flanking side uh, rather than taking things on directly. 
Uh, moving on to the movement abilities of the ship. Uh, although HMS Plymouth is not the fastest or the most agile boat in the game, it does boast the uh, classic British trait of fast acceleration, tight turning radius, and of course the speed's not really affected during turns. You can you can engage a full turn, and this is a trait you only see on the British cruisers. Uh, you'll lose you know a very small amount of speed, maybe one or two knots, and then that speed will begin to ramp back up. They have ridiculous seafaring capabilities uh, good base concealment stealth radar is possible for the brave and the bold <laughs> uh, it also has a low citadel uh, with raised armor belt allowing the plymouth to bounce some battleship caliber guns uh, if angled very carefully but it's not all good <laughs> okay it's it's not all i'm Praising the Plymouth quite highly here, but trust me, it has downsides. The foreign angles are absolutely horrendous. You pretty much got to give full broadside. I think the foreign angles are actually worse than the gross curve first. Um, uh, worse than the foreign angles on the gross curve first. Uh, the range of the guns are quite low. This for the tier, uh, I believe it's 15.3, forcing very more aggressive and careful placement of the ship uh, along with the fact that it does have a relatively low hit point pool it sort of sits very much middle of the pack with its 16 millimeter bow and stern armor making the Plymouth quite a fragile ship um, this is negated some by the fact that it's effective hit points uh, bring it up from 41 to eight, uh, 58 ranking it six overall uh, with its heel but unfortunately unlike the other british cruisers or a lot of the other british cruisers it doesn't have the super heel it just has a standard british cruiser heel which uh, makes quite the difference uh, right so moving on to play style so how is it exactly we should be playing hms plymouth um, well, anyone who spent a considerable amount of time playing the British light cruisers, um, with the exception of uh, of the Edinburgh, with its god tier bow, so uh, it should be a fairly straightforward. You just adopt uh, a Fiji slash Belfast playstyle of sticking close to your DDs, uh, protecting them against the enemy with uh, either with radar or smoke and uh, using a DPM to quickly dispatch DDs and cruisers. Uh, full frontal engagements should always be avoided, particularly with battleships, uh, American and Soviet heavy cruisers, and of course, with its bow, the Edinburgh. You want you to dodge them. Anything else, you can... Uh, DDs and other, other light cruisers are, are fairly easy pickings, but you want to stay away from the heavy ones in particular. Uh, if caught out by a battleship or a heavy cruiser, do not try to use all your guns. Don't try and win with your uh, your, your DPM, uh, because with the awful firing angles, you're just going to expose yourself to very easy citadel hits, and it'll send you back to port before the before you have a chance to say, "By Joe, that hurt." Uh, you can, <laughs> you also cannot afford to use. Uh, you can only afford to use all your guns. Uh, if you're behind, if you're in smoke or behind cover, uh, although fitted with reasonably good torpedoes, the maximum output of one set so one side is sixty-seven thousand, uh, meaning you don't have dev strike capabilities against most battleships, uh, unlike the Minotaur, for example. Um, so you do have to play it a little bit more cautiously. Uh, also, take into a fact that most battleships have some sort of uh, torpedo damage mitigation um i believe when you're talking looking up at tier sevens you're up in 30 40 percent so you can you can almost cut that potential damage out in half so they are they do work better as more of an area of denial weapon rather than an all-out offensive weapon more of a uh, a defensive oh too late <laughs> try and put much damage in as you can while you can uh, the aa suite is not particularly great uh, it has poor five kilometer damage per second um, the mid-range the so the 3.2 kilometers is is kind of okay uh, the two kilometer damage per second uh, for aa is really good but once you get down to that range it, it's not saving you from taking any hits uh, from carriers and it won't save you from taking multiple drops 
from the same squadron either so do not you do you want to avoid carriers it's not really something that you want to take on by yourself that's for sure uh, moving on to, of course, my phone bleeps, apologies. Uh, moving on to the Plymouth's armour. The Plymouth's armour is is not good. It's, it's really not great. So 16mm bow and stern and a 51mm casemate armour, uh, meaning 228mm guns can overmatch you, um, overmatch your bow. And even the 152 millimeters can easily pen your citadel uh, if you give them the right angle. Uh, the one saving grace, as I have already mentioned, if angled correctly, you can bounce the 16 inch guns off the raised casemate, raised casemate armor. But that really is something that you want to try and avoid in general. So, overall opinions the, the Plymouth is the definition of a glass cannon. Too little armour to reliably ban shells and too much armour to also rely on over penetrations. She absolutely excels at killing destroyers and is quite possibly the best support ship at the tier and easily holds a top three spot out of uh, the potential of all the cruisers, like their power wise. Uh, but this ship is it's not casual player friendly. Effective use of cover and map awareness are critical to staying in the fight and actually being able to utilize the crazy DPM available. Uh, bad positioning, poor use of cover or smoke can send you back to the port really fast and prevent you from having any real impact on the battle whatsoever. So my personal suggestions, there's two builds that I like to use on HMS Plymouth. Uh, they require the same modifications. So my modifications are aiming systems mod one, steering gears mod two, concealment system mod one, and the main battery mod. Uh, if you plan to use Plymouth a lot, which I do, uh, and you have the main battery epic mod, I would strongly suggest putting this on to uh, to give you that uh, you know, 600,000 DPM uh, potential uh, which in all fairness you usually get within the first couple of minutes of a match um, onto the command build so for the dpm machine i choose to go with um, bruce frazier the inspirations come from yamamoto and von essen uh, these are to increase your penetration multipliers and reduce your ricochet your, your ricochet angle as well which it's it's all about improving the the guns if you if you shit shoot at something they hit they do damage more consistently uh to bolster this uh we add piercer for a more armor penetration value another ap penetration multiplier before it's too late you're going to spend a lot of time in smoke so if you don't have sonar available you want that extra edge to dodge torpedoes because everyone knows that uh, smoke screens are in fact torpedo magnets uh, punch through again focusing on arm penetration uh, the penetration of the ap rounds uh, fixated to improve accuracy and then fully packed now you could go uh, for I forget off the top of my head what the other one is called, uh, which gives you the additional 10% uh, reload buff to your guns. But what good is an extra 10% of reload to your guns if you can't use it? The additional smoke or additional radar is going to be far more helpful um, in over the full course of a battle. The second option, and I apologize if you do not have Mr. Hot Rod available yourselves. I use Hot Rod because his base trait increases the duration of, uh, of, uh, of radar. So we run Hot Rod with Makawa and Swirtsky to improve our detectability. Um, with my current setup, this gets me down to 9.3 kilometers with a 9.9 .9 kilometer radar, which does mean we can in fact stealth radar. 
Um, and this isn't, oh, I've been spotted, use my radar. No, we can actually, in fact, stealth radar with it. Um, we put on Ingenious along with this. Ingenious will provide us with a general direction of uh, of the closest enemy. So particularly if we're hunting DDs, that gives us time to get our guns into position before we use our radar and not waste 20, 30 seconds traversing turrets into that general direction beforehand. Uh, full speed head to improve the top speed of the of the Plymouth because its speed is not fantastic. Um, because we're using radar, we're likely to get shot at a little bit more, so we use sponge. And again, we're going to run acoustic uh, uh, acoustic chamber to uh, because we're going to primarily focus on DDs. We're probably going to get a lot of torpedoes sent our way, so having the having the improvements to uh, to the uh, to the sonar uh, is probably the most beneficial option there. And uh, and yeah, that's it. That is my extensive. Uh, extensive review on uh, on HMS Plymouth um, definitely one of the most powerful if not the most powerful cruiser at tier 7 but very very casual player unfriendly this is not a ship you can just pick up and play and do well in it is a ship that you are going to have to be adept in uh, in using uh, British like cruisers um, before taking it out um, Anyway, um, I think I think we have everything covered there. Thank you very much for stopping by. Uh, if you've got a ship you want me to do one of these more extensive reviews on, please slap it in the comments below and I will put it on my to-do list. And uh, Or if you think I've got the Plymouth wrong, let me know. Let me know what you think I've got wrong about the Plymouth or if you think there is another tier 7 cruiser that's, that's better. Uh, and, uh, and I look forward to discussing that with you in the comments below. And that's me done. So thank you very much for stopping by, especially if you've made it this far. And of course, until next time, take care.